Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In regards to today's video, we're going to be watching Mr. Tough Guy addressing the provinces who have a problem with him stepping out of his jurisdiction and into theirs in regards to the housing issues. Now, arguably, his government was a reason for this whole housing crisis, but he seems to think he's going to swoop in with our tax money and just save the day. And this comes two days after Danielle Smith called him out and told him to stay out of her backyard. Section 92 of the Constitution states that municipalities fall within the exclusive jurisdiction of the provinces. The terms could not be more clear or more certain. And yet, as we've come to see far too often, the federal government extends itself too far and interferes in our provincial jurisdiction. Now, let's be clear, when we talk about federal funding, we mean money that comes from Canadian taxpayers. For much of our recent history, Albertans have paid far more in federal taxes than we get back in federal programs and transfers. Even during the last economic downturn, one of the worst in our history, we were still the largest net contributor to federal finances. And yet we consistently receive less than our provincial neighbours in per capita funding. And when we do receive funding, those federal dollars come with ideological strings attached, offering funding on its own terms, bypassing the provinces, and forcing municipalities to dance to Ottawa's tune, like funding for so-called safe supply, or electric buses that don't work, or solar and wind projects when we need reliable baseload power, or what we're seeing with the games being played over the housing accelerator funds. Now this was absolutely glorious to hear and you should definitely go watch the whole press junket but it got even better when she was giving him advice on how to not be bored at his job ottawa should be staying in its own lane but at the end of the day i think i know what's happening justin trudeau has said his job is boring well i'll suggest that's because he doesn't actually know what his job is and therefore he isn't doing it because if he were doing his job, he wouldn't have enough time to meddle in my ability to do my job and the ability of other premiers to do their jobs. So here is a partial list of the things he and his government are not doing that they could and should do instead of interfering in provincial matters. He should get rid of the consumer carbon tax. He should fund on-reserve housing and health care. He should close the gap in funding for on-reserve addiction treatment for First Nations. He should provide per capita funding for housing and road infrastructure. He should collaborate to build strong economic corridors. He should develop an aggressive plan on international trade to get our natural resources to market, including a strategy to transport hydrogen and ammonia for export. He should bring in the clean energy investment tax credit that he has promised, including for carbon capture utilization and storage. He should address public safety concerns resulting from their lenient bail system. He should manage federal finances, deficits, and debt in order to combat the inflation that is squeezing every Canadian today. So if I ran through the full list of things that are in federal jurisdiction that they are not doing, we'd be here all afternoon. But these examples clearly show that Ottawa is neglecting its own responsibilities while meddling needlessly in ours. Albertans don't want federal funding to show the world how virtuous we are or to polish Canada's halo internationally. We want our provincial share of per capita federal funding for roads, for infrastructure, and for housing. <laughs> now this lady is an absolute beast. I don't think anybody could have said it any better than her. But today Trudeau was at Vaughn doing another one of these housing accelerator announcements. And the press asked him a question on this. And this was his response to that. Hi, Prime Minister, Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. Back to provincial relations. Uh, Alberta has a new bill that seeks to stop your government or federal governments from negotiating directly with municipalities, essentially saying stick to national policy, not in my backyard. And she says it would be inefficient for you to negotiate all these agreements with hundreds of municipalities. Can you respond to her criticisms and why you would still pursue this? It seems like it was only a few months ago. Uh, that I pointed out quite accurately that the federal government uh, doesn't have a whole lot of direct carriage of uh, housing, that, uh, that it is very much a provincial and municipal responsibility. The federal government has certain responsibilities that we've been stepping up on since 2017, but I pointed out that this is not something the federal government can solve alone. And over the following weeks and months, we heard from a cavalcade of premiers saying, see, the federal government 
needs to step up more, needs to do more. It's to get out of the business of housing. The federal government needs to step up and fix this housing crisis that we've seen across the country. So we are. Provinces should be careful what they wish for. They want the federal government to fix this housing crisis? We are. We will. Now, let me be very clear. It'll be much better if the provinces continue to step up with significant ambition. <laughs> whoa, 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 Mr. Trudeau, please calm down. Where's this tough guy act coming from when just a few months ago you said that the housing crisis was a solvable issue if we worked together? Housing is a solvable problem, and we're all going to solve it if we work together. Canada has done it before, and we're going to do it again. So he acknowledges months ago that this is a team thing, a collaborative issue. And here again, he reiterates that this is something that the federal government can't solve alone. They need to be working with the provinces. Yet he continues to bypass the provinces and goes straight to the municipalities, which is out of his jurisdiction. And he's been doing this for the past three, four weeks. And even the media questions has questions on this. Hey, zoom out for me if you can. Uh, Justin Trudeau was in Halifax on Tuesday, Toronto on Wednesday, Winnipeg on Thursday, Calgary today, Vancouver last week. What's your takeaway from these non-stop housing announcements? Well, the two things that we, I see with these announcements, it's interesting. Several months ago, uh, Justin Trudeau was running around saying that uh, the federal government was not responsible for housing, it is the provinces. All of a sudden, he's accelerated a lot of interest. I think that is because his government is probably recognizing that they're having a lot of trouble, frankly, in the polls. And they're having some political challenges as a result of the affordability crisis that we see across the country, including housing. And uh, they're in a bit of a panic trying to respond to it. The second thing, though, is that we've seen these type of announcements to the federal government before. They roll into town with very little detail, say a very big number. And then our province ultimately very rarely sees any of that money anyway. It ends up being invested in other parts of the country uh, curiously, where, uh, you know, there does certainly appear to us that the federal liberal government is looking at trying to make sure that they can either save seats or secure seats for the next election. And anyone could see what Jason Nixon is saying there makes sense. If we look at the most recent polls as of the 7th, the Conservatives way in the lead. It looks like they'd win a majority government if it was held today, the election. And so the liberals are not doing so hot, but I don't know why they keep putting these three up there all the time. Sean, Freeland and Trudeau. It looks bad all around, but this is where uh, Trudeau uh, becomes a tough guy again and tells the provinces if they don't want to work with him, then just get out of the way. And we've seen a number of provinces do that. When we announced the housing accelerator funding, $4 billion across the country, Quebec said, you know what? We'll actually match the $900 million you're sending to municipalities in Quebec, we'll double it, and we'll do even more, even faster. BC came forward and said, you know what? There's a BC Builds program we've wanted to build around affordable housing. Um, we'll, if you can match the money we're doing, we'll do even more. And we did that, and we created the Canada Builds program. And we're working directly with municipalities that want to be super ambitious. The three mayors that are here today represent municipalities that signed housing accelerator agreements worth in excess of $150 million that's going to create 4,000 units over the coming years uh, in, this, uh, in this region. These are things we are doing concretely where we recognize that Canadians need help and support and investment and don't so much care about you know, whose responsibility it is first and foremost. They just want it to get done. And that's why we are there to work hand in hand in full respect with those provinces who want to solve the problem and ask those provinces that don't want to solve the problem to just get out of the way while we solve that problem that Canadians are facing. Man, if you want to look up the definition of gaslighting, you look no further but Trudeau because this guy self-contradicts all the time. He has just openly admitted that he's working directly with three municipalities in Ontario, meaning he's bypassing the province, yet in the same breath is saying he wants to respect the provinces and work with them. 
But if they don't want to work with him, then to to get out of his way. But he doesn't even have the jurisdiction regardless to do that. He needs to work with the provinces. So it just really doesn't make any sense here. I don't know what he's trying to prove, what muscles he's trying to flex here. But as the questions continue, we actually have a little bit of comical relief because they question him on his testimony from the other day, the inquiry. (laughs) in what he said in regards to not reading any of his briefings. And Prime Minister, back to the foreign interference inquiry, much has been made of your admission, I suppose, during the testimony that you don't, you rarely read all of your intelligence briefings or that you don't read them all. I never read the David Morrison memo to my recollection. I read everything that is put in front of me. The only sure way to make me aware of a priority issue is not simply to give me a note which i may or may not read or may not have time to read Uh, a prime minister takes in massive amounts of information and reads massive amounts of documents first of all these are uh, briefing notes that i never saw i expect anything that is of particular high importance or uh, relevance to be elevated. And, and, and let me just, I mean, I wouldn't want to give people the impression that, that um, briefings weren't something particularly uh, intelligence briefings we took very, very seriously. But hey, why should we not believe him? We also had his chief of staff tell us that he reads everything that comes across his desk. Of course, the prime minister reads any documents he does receive. But I guess Trudeau forgot that she said this, as well as he just admitted this a day ago. But when your snowball of lies starts getting out of control, it's hard to remember what you've said, what you haven't, what's the truth, what's not. This guy just lives in fantasy land. But as always, just this my opinion. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this whole situation. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We are fast approaching 20,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough. It's been an awesome journey. Um, Hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.